You are welcome to the Mesa Revelation Channel, a prophetic end time ministry, preparing and awakening the children of the Lord. And today, our message is dedicated to awakening the Hebrews and exposing the identity of the Messiah, Yeshua. And we are saying that there are seven things that show that uh, the Messiah was a black man. Seven things, seven factors that will tell you that the Messiah, Yeshua, was a black man. And you need to be awake. You need to be awakened. And somebody will wonder why are you talking about the ethnicity of the Messiah? Uh, there are several reasons. Um, the first one is that the history of the Hebrews uh, has been distorted. And the history of the black men and women has been distorted. And when we're talking about the distortion of the history, uh, I refer you to a book, and that is the book, The Destruction of Black civilization. The author is Chancellor uh, Chancellor Williams and he, he talks about great issues of race from 4500 BC to 2000 AD. And so you're talking about the history of the Negroes, black people, as spanning 6,000 years. And uh, imagine somebody telling you that uh, you are not a Hebrew Israelite and you don't have a history. Your history began during the time of the slave trade and you don't have any presence in civilization and you are not included in the book. And we are saying that all these are lies and people need to be awakened as the Messiah is coming together, his chosen people who are scattered uh, over the world. And today I'm using the opportunity to focus on seven things that show that the Messiah that you are waiting for the Messiah who is coming to gather the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah was a black uh, person. And I'm focusing on seven things. And so be attentive. And the first one is the genealogy of the Messiah. And when we're talking about genealogy of the Messiah, we are talking about his blood line who are in the bloodline. And the Gospel of Matthew uh, gives exhaustive genealogy of the Messiah, Yeshua. And so if we focus on that, we can find out what the ethnicity, the skin color of the Messiah was. And if you look at the genealogy of the Messiah, uh, we are focusing on two people uh, Solomon, who um, was a king, a king of Judah, and Solomon married Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of, um, um, rather Solomon was the, um, the, the son of David. David married Bathsheba, and Bathsheba was uh, the wife of Uriah. You know the story the story between uh, King David and Uriah, and David taking uh, the wife of Uriah and giving birth to um, Solomon, who became the king of Judah. Uriah was a Hittite, and it's likely that Bathsheba was also a Hittite. And Bible scholars believe, and they conclude that the Hittites were and black people. And so that is an indication that 
um, Bathsheba was a black woman and who gave birth to Solomon um, because of the, the, the marriage between Bathsheba and uh, King David. Uh, you can also look at Rahab. Uh, Rahab, as we are aware, uh, is an ancestor of um, the Messiah. Uh, Rahab was a prostitute, a Canaanite, and Bible scholars um, believe and they conclude that uh, Rahab was a black woman, a Canaanite. And so when you see a black person in the genealogy of the Messiah, uh, the conclusion is that the Messiah was a black uh, person. So that is one of the things we need to consider. Uh, by the way, you also have to remember that the Hebrews study, um, the Hebrews um, live in uh, many places. And Abraham came from Uar of Chadis in Mesopotamia. And Bible uh, scholars and historians conclude that during this time, the people living in Mesopotamia were black uh, people. And the reference is a book written by uh, Rudolf Winsor from Babylon to uh, Timbuktu. Uh, the Hebrew Israelites also lived in Canaan. And if you look at the table of na nations, uh, Canaan uh, was the son of Ham, a black person. Uh, so the Canaanites were black and the Hebrew Israelites lived in Canaan. So Mesopotamia was inhabited by black people, Canaan inhabited by black people, and the Hebrew Israelites, of course, lived in Egypt. That's why we had uh, the first Exodus uh, from Egypt. And historians, I'm talking about those who are telling the truth, uh, they will um, tell you, including Herodotus, that the Egyptians were black people, ancient uh, Egyptians were black uh, people. And you have to be awake, uh, you need to be awakened. Uh, the Arabs came to uh, Egypt in 738 AD, AD, after the death of Christ, long, 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 long um, after the children of uh, Judah, uh, the children of Jacob had left uh, Egypt. As so you're looking at the genealogy of the Messiah, and you are looking at the places where his ancestors lived in, in Mesopotamia, uh, in, in, in Egypt, and also in Canaan, and these places were inhabited by uh, black people, and therefore you will say that based upon the genealogy of the Messiah, uh, looking at Rahab, uh, looking at Solomon, um, the Messiah was a black person. You remember uh, what happened between uh, King Solomon and uh, the Queen and uh, the Queen of Sheba. Um, so, uh, how will you conclude? Um, what about the ethnicity of Solomon? Uh, Solomon was a black king, and he was a king of Judah, and he is the ancestor of the Messiah. And therefore, the Messiah was a black man. He was not a white person. The second thing we need to consider is the safe haven. When I say safe haven, we are talking about how you go and hide in a safe place. And I will use an analogy. Um, if you're a black person and you are running away in America, uh, you go to a black neighborhood and hide somewhere. You, go, you don't go to a white neighborhood because they will catch you. Uh, so it makes sense. Um, if you are a white person and you are running away, uh, you go and hide in a white neighborhood. You don't go and hide in a black uh, neighborhood. Steve Biko uh, from South Africa who was killed, a black man, uh, you will hide in a black neighborhood. You will not go and hide in white neighborhood um, where white people are looking uh, for him to, uh, to kill him. Nelson Mandela will not go and hide in a white neighborhood when white people are chasing him to lynch him, to kill him, and to murder him. Um, he will not do that. 
the angel of the Lord um, approached um, Joseph and Mary and said that you have to take the, the, the child of God to, uh, to Egypt and hide. And the prophecy is very clear in Jose, in Matthew, out of Egypt I call my son. And why would uh, the Messiah be hidden in a safe haven in Egypt? It's because ancient Egypt was a black nation and the Messiah was black. And it, make, it, uh, it makes sense for the Lord to hide a black Messiah in a black nation. And so it's very clear that the children of Jacob, black men and women, uh, they were uh, hidden in, in a black nation that is Egypt. And so the history is very clear, the scriptures is very clear. It was a black nation, black Egypt, that became a safe haven for the children of Jacob. And of course, it was black Egypt that also became a safe haven for a black Messiah, Yeshua, and Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we are looking at the third factor, the third thing that we need to consider when uh, we, we are in, um, in a dilemma. We are responding to the critics, um, whether Jesus was a white man or a black man. The third thing we need to consider is the manner and customs of the Hebrews. Uh, if there are any group of um, people, uh, you can identify them by the manners and the customs. The customs of the Chinese, uh, the customs of um, the native um, American, American Indians, the customs and manners of the Hebrews, and that is how you identify um, who is a Hebrew and how you identify the, the ethnicity and the color, the features of that, um, of, of the Hebrew. You look at the manners and customs. And when we are talking about manners and customs, uh, we'll go to um, Numbers, uh, the book of Numbers, chapter uh, 6, verse 5. And here we are talking about the Nazarite. Uh, who is a Nazarite? A Nazarite is a Hebrew who has been set apart by God to achieve a purpose uh, designed by God. So Nazarite were Hebrews who were set apart and they were giving strict instructions. And Moses gave the instructions uh, to the Nazarite, and we can get the instructions from uh, Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 6. And we are looking at um, um, an instruction given to the Nazarite, um, Numbers, chapter 6, verse 5. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head. No razor should come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. So let the locks on your hair grow. It means grow, um, have locks, dread locks on your, on your hair. Let it grow. So a Nazarite follow the customs of the Hebrews as instructed by God himself. If you're a Nazarite, you are identified by certain things. First of all, you set up yourself apart, you are holy, and you let your hair grow, you grow dreadlocks. Uh, you can say you become a Rasta man, if you want to uh, use the term Rasta man. Uh, who are uh, the Nazarites in the Bible? I will give um, three uh, examples. Uh, Samson was a Nazarite. Uh, he was set apart. 
and you can get the reference in the book of Judges, and you know the um, the iconic dreadlocks of uh, Samson. He was a rasta. Uh, John and uh, John the Baptist was um, was a Nazarite, and he was set apart. And it, it presupposes that he also um, um, had dreadlocks on, and Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, was a Nazarite. And so the question we ask ourselves is that if Jesus was a Nazarite, what type of hair will he have? Will he have blue eyes, blonde hair, and pointed nose? Will he, will he look like a gentleman from Italy or from Paris? Or he, will he look, look like a Negro based upon the fact that Jesus was a Nazarite like Samson and had to follow the instructions of Moses as recorded in the book of Numbers chapter 6 verse 1 and, of, and particularly uh, looking at Numbers chapter uh, 6 verse 5 which talks about the dread locks and as we are talking about the dread locks let me stop a little bit and say that if you look at the 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 discoveries of masada masada was a city in judah that was destroyed by the romans around ad 70 and archaeological records show that uh, the men uh, in masada they wore dreadlocks um rasta men and that is evidence to show that they were Negroes, if you permit me to use the word uh, Negroes. And so um, the conclusion is that based upon the manner and customs of the Nazarites, uh, Jesus had dreadlocks and Jesus uh, was, a, uh, was a black person, and like Samson, like John and the Baptist. Um, the fourth thing we need to consider is association and when we say association we're talking about the people that you associate yourself with um, if you are a, a black person you associate with black people uh, if you are a white person you associate with uh, white people and in Egypt uh, Moses associated with his people and his people were they were Negroes, they were black people. He associated with black people. And he was very, very nationalistic and conscious of his black identity. And Moses even had to kill uh, to protect his people. And you know the, the story uh, in, in the book, uh, the book of um, uh, written by Moses, um, Exodus. Uh, you know what happened. Uh, Moses associated with his people. And uh, he, he was a black person born in black Egypt. Association. And as we are talking about association, how do you use association to identify the color, the skin color of the Messiah? And we go to uh, the Bible and you go to the Acts of Apostles and uh, you, we mention two people, um, Simon um, of Cyrene, and uh, you know the history, uh, a black person who was compelled to carry the cross of the Messiah, Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene is modern day Libya. Historians and Bible uh, scholars all conclude that Cyrene was a black um, region. And so Simon of Cyrene means Simon coming from a black region and he was compelled to carry the cross of the, of the Messiah. And if Jesus was a white person, um, will, uh, will, um, would they ask a black person to, um, to carry his cross? You can see probably they would, but it's more likely that um, they ask a black man to carry the cross of a black man and that is 
uh, the, 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 the more uh, logic uh, conclusion. So Simon of Sarin, and not only Simon of Sarin, we also have Simeon the Nega, N-I-G-E-R, and I'm not using the word because uh, I want to be racist. I'm quoting what the Bible talks about, Simeon the Nega, in the Acts of um, Apostles. And uh, this Simeon uh, was from a black region, and these are the apostles, the early apostles, and these people were with the Messiah, as we are aware, Simon of Cyrene, and carried the cross of the Messiah. Um, I consulted AMG Encyclopedia of Bible Facts. The, the author is an American, he's a white man, and of course he agrees that Cyrene, which is modern Libya, was inhabited by black people. Don't let anybody fool you. If you go to Libya and see white people there, if you go to Egypt and you see white people there, that doesn't mean that they were there all the time. The Arabs, the white people came to Egypt um, when the Hebrews, the black Hebrews had left Egypt. The Arabs came to Egypt in 630 uh, AD. They came after the pyramids had been built by black pharaohs. And so don't let anybody uh, deceive you about people who are living in, uh, in Israel now, uh, living in Egypt now, and uh, they look white, and then you make a wrong conclusion. You make a fallacious statement that because people who are living there are white, it means that the, those who um, lived there in the ancient days uh, were white. That is a fallacy, that is a myth, that is a lie, that is fraud, that is distortion. And so we're talking about um, association. Um, the Messiah was a black person, and you can deduce from the fact that uh, the people that uh, were associated with him, they were black. And of course, a black man, a Negro, was compelled to carry the cross of the Messiah. I don't think Simon just volunteered to carry the cross of the Messiah. He was asked to do that. And, um, and the Romans who um, massacred the Messiah, of course, they knew the ethnicity and the skin color of the Messiah. And they knew who Simon of Cyrene was. They knew that Simon of Cyrene was a Negro. Uh, so he was compared to carry the, the, the cross of the Messiah. And as we are talking about um, the, the identity of the Messiah, the fifth thing we need to consider are visions. Um, Numbers 12, verse 6. The Lord said that, if somebody is a prophet, the Lord will talk to that person in visions and in dreams. And when you're talking about visions, about the Messiah, our brother Daniel is numero N, number one. And you read Daniel, and read the book of Daniel, specifically Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. He was given a vision of the Messiah, woolly hair, woolly hair. And if you read the vision of Daniel, there's no other conclusion um, but that you conclude the Messiah was a black man. And when we're talking about visions, you also read Revelation chapter 1, verses uh, 14 uh, to 18. The revelation given to uh, John on the island of Patmos. Um, Jesus, uh, his Characteristics were shown to John and his feet, feet like fine brass. And fine brass that is put in um, um, fire, uh, it is dark or it is brown. And that is the feet of the Messiah. And he also saw his hair, and that shows that Messiah was a black person. And it is consistent with the Nazarite vows, the vows that a Nazarite made, that 
no razor should, should touch the hair let the hair grow as rec is recorded in the book of Moses in Numbers chapter 6 uh, verse 5 as we talked uh, earlier on so vision show that the Messiah was black the vision of our brother Daniel and the vision of our brother uh, John who was um, giving a vision about the Messiah who is coming very soon let me stop here uh, since we are talking about a vision I will I will bring a vision that I saw of the Messiah. I've already done a video about it, so I will not go into details. April the 5th to 2007. April the 5th, 2007. Um, I was uh, in Baltimore at that time when um, the vision was given to me. April the 5th, 2007. Baltimore, a city in Maryland in the United States um, the Messiah uh, Jesus Yeshua and John the Baptist both appeared to me in a vision and they were black men they had a hair like Rasta and it's consistent with the vision given to uh, Daniel it's consistent with the vision given to uh, John in the book of Revelation and so if there's any person who says he has seen the Messiah in a vision and the Messiah had blonde hair and blue eyes and pointed nose and was speaking English or uh, he was speaking French and uh, he was speaking German um, um, I'll, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. Um, there's a lady by name um, Mary Buster, an American uh, woman, a white woman, written a book and saying that um, she has met Jesus before. And she didn't describe the color of the Messiah. Uh, so I will not doubt um, her, but I'm reporting what I saw in a given uh, in a vision given to me on april the 5th 2007 in baltimore in the united states the messiah appeared as a black man john the baptist appeared uh, as a black man they came at the same time and um they had they were having conversation i had the conversation the conversation confirmed the baptism of the Messiah given by uh, John, the, uh, John the Baptist. Uh, but in, in addition to confirming the scriptures, and I had the opportunity to see the Messiah in close uh, proximity, very close, um, I would say about uh, four feet away, and he was a black person. So I have to say that the Messiah uh, was a black man based upon visions given to Daniel and John and vision given to me on April the 5th 2007 in the city of Baltimore which is located in Maryland in the United States we're talking about the black identity of the Messiah the savior of the world so we are not joking we are not just telling lies we, we are not saying this because we want you to like the video or subscribe to the channel. We are telling the truth. Knowing very well that in Revelation 22 verse 15, those who lie will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So I know what I'm doing when I say the Messiah was a black person, appeared to me as a black person. He appeared alongside John the Baptist and both of them were black men. I am telling the truth. If I am in the court of law, I will say that I am giving my testimony under the penalties of perjury. Okay, okay. the sixth thing that we need to consider is testimony of eyewitnesses. Those who saw the Messiah. Eyewitnesses, those who saw the Messiah. And there are so many eyewitnesses. 
And there are so many people who lived in the first century around the time when the Messiah uh, lived. And one of them is Josephus, um, a, a, a historian. And uh, Josephus will confirm that the Hebrews, uh, they were uh, black people. And even Paul, Paul associated with the Messiah. He, Paul knew the Messiah and he knew of him. He persecuted the followers of the Messiah. And the Lord appeared to him on the road uh, to Damascus. The Lord appeared in the form of, a, of, of light. But I'm, I'm, I'm citing Paul to let you know that a Roman historian, Tacitus, uh, he lived around the time of Paul and he, uh, he said that Paul was a black person. And if you read the Bible as of apostles, there were instances where the, the captains of a prison, when they saw Paul, they said, are you not Egyptian? Are you not a black person? You, your skin is black. So are you not an Egyptian? Are you not a black person from Egypt? And so they mistook Paul to be an Egyptian, and that is an inference that Paul was a black a person, like uh, other black people, um, Simon of Sarin, and uh, Simeon the Nigger, and also um, the Messiah who was uh, a black man. The last thing we need to consider, the icons. And here you know the icons, Black Madonna, the Black Madonna icons. According to Rudolf Winsor, there are about 700 Black Madonna sites all over the world. It means that many people acknowledge that the mother of the Messiah, Mary, was a Black uh, woman. And here I will end by um, talking about a coin, a coin showing the ethnicity of the Messiah, uh, a coin that was engraved by Emperor Justinian, a Roman emperor who ruled around the fifth century. He had a coin, and once on one side of the coin was he himself, Emperor Justinian, with white. Um, features, and the other side of the coin was the 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 the, 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 uh, the portrait of the Messiah Jesus, and he, he looked Negroid, black. So an emperor of Rome, Justinian, engraving a coin of the Messiah, and he looked Negroid. And he was different from Emperor Justinian, who was a white man from Italy, from Rome, a Roman. We're talking about the ethnicity of the Messiah. And I don't want to throw a bomb. Now, I would let Putin throw the bomb. Putin's nuke. Black Jesus nuke. I don't want to... Um, throw any, uh, any bomb here about the Messiah. Putin did it. In 2024, he opened the votes in, 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 in Russia uh, to expose the icons, showing that Jesus was a black person. And Putin said that he and his people will worship a black Jesus. And so these are the seven things that we need to consider when you want to identify who the Messiah was. He was a black person. And the history of black people has been distorted and destroyed. The destruction of black civilization, a book written by Chancellor Williams, that is one evidence. It's time to be awakened. Don't let anybody uh, deceive you. Those who distorted black civilization, the same people are distorting the gospel. The same people are deceiving you with white Jesus and white God and white angels. 
Don't let anybody deceive you. Matthew 24 verse 4. Let no man deceive you. Not a politician who will deceive you by his words. Not a pastor, evangelical who will deceive you from his pulpit. Not a painter, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, who will deceive you with his paint, painting the Messiah white. Be awake, be awakened. Thank you, my email, raptureafrica at yahoo.com. Thank you very much. Seven things you need to consider to, to know that the Messiah who saved the world with his blood was a black man. A black man saved the world. Thank you.